Paul in some Marlins games. Got a nice base tan working. You want to talk <laughs> Sandy Alcantara? Oh, dude, it's it's honestly the biggest thing is, is every five days you get to show up to the yard, yeah. and you know that dude is going to be on the mound. You know something special is happening, and and really it happened in 19 in spring training. He started throwing changeups in spring training, and I, you know, he had only thrown fastball slider. So I'm thinking, wait a second. What's this pitch he's throwing right now? Because you can see the velocity doesn't tell you the pitch. At 94 miles Yeah, at 93. Hour. And you right. got guys out in front. And I'm like, that's not a slider. And then after, I said, what do you got? You got a change up now? He goes, yeah. And it's good. And I'm like, yeah, it's good. And I think that's what really took him over the top because now he's got three pitches. And then this year, that's the pitch that sends him really over the top. His cuatro costura, as he likes to say. He likes to throw that four seam up in the zone. And he's putting guys away. And when you know, as a hitter, when you have a pitch that's going wow. down at 100 miles an hour, a slider at 92 and a changeup at 93, and then all of a sudden you force him, you look where that, I mean, look where that pitch is starting. How, I don't know physics. I have, maybe, I have, maybe, maybe the ball, maybe we have to get the crystal ball going. And, and pause this real quick, pause this. What's that velo say? 93. And the big thing to me is people start to say, hey, why are strikeouts on, up in baseball? People are trying to launch angle. No, that was a fastball, the best <laughs> I bullet. Said that same Dude, thing. that's the best bullet in, in, the, in the 90s, 93, that you're Not like. Lee Sachs bullet. Well, all right. That was hey, early. That was 80s, though. Hey, but, but you know what? But what I'm, what I'm saying is, is you got a pitch that's moving out of the zone at 93, and the guy's throwing 101 in the, in the eighth inning, ninth inning. Why are changeups or why are, are strikeouts up? It's pretty obvious. The stuff is getting unbelievable. I'm, I'm actually, I strike out three times a night in the booth, in the broadcast right. booth. So that's what's filthy. You keep it going. It, it's just, to me, that's, and the other part, that's 94, no big deal. Look at the split there. This is, hold this right here. This is what's crazy to me. So when he started throwing that four seam, he told me, he's like, it's, it's night out, because if you listen to this post-game talk, and you know this, you start to hear a little He things. came in here, JP. He is a super confident cat. Well, that's, but that's the thing, right? He starts to say, that was nasty tonight. On his yeah. post-games, they're like, hey, how was your changeup? Oh, nasty. And, and so when you start to hear those little things, you know this, confidence on the mound. He throws that four seam up in the zone at 100 miles an hour. The sinker and the changeup. As a hitter, you're trying to cover all these different spots, right? And all of a sudden, you can't tell what the pitch is until, I mean, it's by a second, right? It's, and, he's, and the thing is, it's 100 miles an hour. And what's crazy to me is his splits right now, I think he's going to get even better because his splits right now, lefties struggle against them more than righties do. Righties are hitting like 230, 240 off. And it's because lefties have to contend with both sides of the plate, right? Because he can throw slider in, fastball in, front door sinker. He can throw his change up and then away he's, He's got his sinker, his changeup, and he can backdoor guys. Well, righties, he really just hangs out out over the plate, and he'll run in a, a sinker and a changeup. But I think as soon as he starts to learn how to even front door guys, where it's a little Roy Holiday esque, where it's the X's. What, what's the percentages offhand? Like, is he using the four seamer more than the sinker? No, it's it's it's, it's all like it's split. it's like it's like all twenty. It's like in the twenties. It's like 20, 20, 20, and then he'll mix in. He, so he's got the four pitches that he throws: the sinker, the four seam, the uh, slider and the change and they're all around 20 and then he would mix in every once in a while he mixed in a curveball and he kind of cashed that because Brandon Bell took him deep <laughs> took him bridge and he so, was like we'll see you later on but that. but it's pretty much a four pitch true four pitch mix and you do not know and and when I started to think and the, and the biggest thing is and I know that we can get into this is Rick Porcello was a guy that I started thinking about in my head because I faced Rick Porcello right and I, I think what has made Sandy so successful well when you have a four seam, right, and you're used to seeing a guy who's a sinker slider, so everything's going down. Yep. All of a sudden, he sticks the four seam. I had no idea what I was doing at the plate. I could not figure this out. When he was sinker slider, I was like, give me a bat. Yeah. Because I knew that if that pitch started up like that, it was gonna come down into my hitting zone. But as soon as he threw the four seam, I thought, this ain't good. I can't and he's tell. He's living at 92 as opposed to 100. 100 exactly. But that's what that's what really took Rick Porcello over the top for Won me. Cy Young. To, to win the Cy Young was that he ended up throwing that pitch right there, because you can't tell what this pitch is. I mean, you've seen. You remember, as a hitter, you only know what you just saw the pitch yeah. before. So if you saw a ball that's moving downwards, when I see the same pitch, 
I'm going down. I'm, I'm going down. All of a sudden, it's 101 at the top of the zone. I think the four best pitchers in the game right now all have one thing in common. DeGrom, Scherzer, Verlander, and Contra. The key is if you can have two fastballs. It's nearly impossible. Did you? No. They're coming out of the bullpen. A but, but, okay, if you're a hitter and you're, you're in a fastball count, you know fastball's coming. But if you don't know it's the sinking one or the riding one, you're, you're caught off guard. Absolutely. So you have two. They are two different they're, pitches. I want people to understand. And they, they yeah, complement each other. Yeah. And, and this shows it, too. I mean, look at the, look at the difference of, of drop on the sinker and the four seam, right? So, it, I mean, and I used to say, when I used to get the numbers, I'd say, hey, put the fastballs all together. Stop with the sinker, four seam. I used to say that. And then now, more and more, you, you watch. I'm like, wait a second. You got to split it up because it's a big difference. Yeah. It, it's, and, oh, yeah, by the way, it's 97.8. And then when this guy gets into the ninth inning, it is he starting 97.8 and staying there the whole time? And no, and then or is his no, steady no, build? It's a build. And what's crazy, and this is one one thing people don't realize about Sandy, right? And I have to toot his horn here because I get to watch this guy every day. Yeah. Right. He's the most jovial person. You had him on this show. You know he's nice. He's a good guy. The day before he pitches, he starts to get quiet. And he told me he's like, I start to get. The day before I pitch, it's almost time. And the day he pitches, no one talks to him. And he is he comes into that clubhouse. I ride in the bus with him to the field because I take the last bus. <laughs> and I sit there and I'm like, oh my God, I don't, I don't want to do say anything. I don't want to say anything. He he walks by me and he hits me like to say hi. And I'm like, hey, like that's he's become a dog. And you see it on the mound now, and you know this. I mean, this guy comes right after everybody. Strike one, strike two. He's just putting dudes away. He's become a different monster in here as well. And I think that's something he didn't used to do. When he comes in on the day he pitches, everybody's like, stay away. Yeah, don't Cy come Young, no guy. doubt. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say Reese, no doubt. That's numbers. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the only one close to him is, is Gallon. Yes. Yeah. That's it. He's had, a, he's had a much. You know what I think he needs more than anything? He needs some help offensively oh, because oh, it's man. tough when you go out every day and you give up a couple of runs and you know I can't give up any more because we're probably not going to score three or four. No Jazz, no Solaire. No, it's been it's been tough for him. And here you're right because every every pitch is a high leverage pitch, and you know this too. If it's a one run game late in the game, you might not come in because you don't want to let the guy pull you bridge or you know bridge into the pool side because now it's a tie game. So now it takes away as opposed to some of these guys are pitching with a lead and it's like I can go on either side of the plate cuz I'm not scared. You know, late in games when I was catching, if I went in, I was like if we get beat get it in. if we get beat to the pool side, I'm in trouble. So that takes away another pitch from him in the sense of yeah, it's 98 100, but you just give one opportunity and it's a tie game because like you said it's been tied. He's or he's just, you know, down one or just up one. It, it's never – he's been all gas the entire season, and that's what's even more impressive. You know, I, one of the best qualities that I – I see the game from a pitcher standpoint. He sees it because he catches. When he's in a dicey game in the seventh, eighth inning, his pitch count's getting up there 90-95, he's not looking for his friends. You'll see pitchers that start peeking out to see, hey, somebody warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> you take a little more time in between pitches. You know, you start, you know, yeah. and you just exude the body language which says, I think the tank's empty. That he, he does there's no part of that in this guy. Well, here's, I have a funny story about that. So, you remember in Philly, he got taken out of the game. And I remember he went to it. Town I did, on it, I did right? a skybox on okay. it because I was like, Donnie, don't do this. Okay, so, he, so I talked to him the next day, and I'm like, hey, what happened? He's like, if he comes to take me out again, I'm not giving him the ball. <laughs> so, I don't know if you remember the next game. The next game. We're in St. Louis, and I don't know if you remember. I posted I remember. about it. I'm sitting there, and on air, I'm going, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because he told me, if he comes and gets me, I'm not giving him the ball. I'm walking away. And so, I'm like, what's – Donnie Baseball's coming out there to, hey, give me the ball. And Sandy's going, no, you can go back to the dugout. So you saw Sandy. I mean, he was going crazy yeah, in his glove. And they kept him in the game. And that's why I went, oh, thank God. Because I, he had told me, he's like, I'm not letting it happen again. 